What is going on guys, Ryan Nelson here, and today I'm mobbing around, I don't wanna say mobbing, I don't say mobbing, I'm just bouncing around the streets of San Francisco, doing some really awesome street photography. Just nailed a banger shot, so I'm really excited about that. I'll show that to you here in a minute. I just wanted to share a couple of street photography tips with you, so let's go, let's check it out. So just so you guys know, none of these are hard and fast rules. You can break any of them, you can break all of them, and still get really good shots, so, don't be binding to any of these rules. Let's go. One thing you can do to get better shots is find a high vintage point, which means going up. Uphill, like I am right now. Or you can go to an elevator, like that. Get a high vantage point, or sometimes even a really, really low vantage point. Makes for a really good, different angle, different point of view. I'm starting to get out of breath. Now something else that you can do is try to fill the background uh, with something, buildings, trees, uh, clouds, anything but just like bare sky or bare white. See, look at that, bare white. Now I have like streets and buildings. It's a little bit better and it's not quite as distracting from just being like this just bright, bright white thing right behind you. Or your subject. Right behind you or your subject. So one thing you can do to help get better images is make sure you fill the background with something that relates to your subject, something that tells a little bit of a story about where they're at. I'm in the city, there's public transportation, it's a street, there's things going on. Bonus points, let's see if I can get it in there. Bonus points if your background can tell a story and be recognizable or iconic and really let the viewer know where that subject is or where that photo was taken, where that video was shot. Just saying, it helps. something else that you can do to make your photos, uh, I don't know, stand out. And it's really fun after a rain. Uh, it's the easiest to do after it's rained. And, well, it's raining right now, so that's fun. Something you can do is uh, use reflections. Uh, use puddles that have pulled uh, up against the curb. You find them on the sidewalk. Maybe even bring your own bottle of water and just pour it out on the, the concrete or whatever you want. Uh, another thing you can do to use reflections if it hasn't rained, uh, use a car windshield or the rooftop of a car. Now sometimes this works a lot better at night or at dusk, dawn, uh, when there's more uh, lights going on. Lights reflect a little bit better. But anyway, you can use reflections any way you want. Anything that's shiny, anything you find that light reflects off of, try to use it as a reflection. See what you can come up with. Uh, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's really, really hard to get that right reflection. You have to put the camera almost down into the water or right on the car. Don't do it to expensive cars and try to do it only, maybe, maybe only to your own car. Don't scratch anybody's car. That's not on me. You did that, I didn't do it. Not my fault, too bad. All right, on to the next tip. Let's see what I can come up with. Another thing that you can do to make your shots even a little bit better, uh, it's kind of a tricky one. I've actually been struggling with this one today, getting like the good shot or the shot that's in my mind. But uh, you can find like a shadowed or a really dark background and then have your subject back lit. And that makes them really pop, really stand out on the background. I think I've got some other shots from some other time that I've done like this and I'm gonna try to find those and pop them up on the screen. Um, just so you see an example. Hey puppy! Hey puppy! Hey puppy! <laughs> Random dogs, you know, whatever. Like I said, I've been struggling with this a little bit today. It's okay, I'm not gonna push it, I'm not gonna stress myself out over it because it's just, I'm not having fun today. Uh, if it was for a job, you definitely, definitely make sure you figure that out. Figure it out, get it shot, get that shot. All right, next tip, don't know what it is. Let's go.
So another thing that you can do is try to find uh, things in your environment to try to frame your subject. And I usually do this with trees, shrubbery, uh, anything green usually it helps. Sometimes you can use tree branches to kind of arc over and fill a blank sky. Uh, that's a good way to avoid shooting on like really clear days and getting just blank blue or even white sky. Uh, just throw a tree branch in there, try to find a sidewalk that's covered in trees. Kind of like that one right over there. It works really well. I've done it quite often in the past and it just kind of helps fill, fill that whole frame and maybe even tell a little bit of a story of where you're at. Again, telling the story of where you're at, what your surroundings are, and make it relate to your subject. So I think I just recorded an entire section with my mic off, so that was awesome. Anyway, there, let's, let's check, was the mic off? Yeah, yeah, the mic was off. Anyway, I was talking about using motion in your photos to kind of tell woo, more of a story about what, what's going on, about your environment. And you're thinking, okay, it's a photo, Ryan, how am I shooting, how am I showing motion? Well, it's a little bit tricky, but you're gonna need a monopod or a tripod or really, really steady hands or to lean up against a post or a mailbox or something. Uh, just use a lower, slower, lower shutter speed. It's really that easy. That's all there is to it. So give that a shot. Sometimes it's pretty cool. It works really nice around dusk, dawn kind of time. Maybe dark, dreary days, kind of like it is today. Um, this is a cool street. Woohoo! Maybe I'll walk down it. Let's go. As I've been out walking around, I found myself on the Asian street market side of things, and I think that could be a whole tutorial in itself. Alright, so I thought I'd come to a park where it was maybe a little bit quieter, but now it's really windy, so I hope my dead cat up here is doing his job. But I can't believe I haven't touched on this yet. You probably noticed it throughout some of my sample images. Come on, layering! Layer your images. Make sure you have layers of information going on. Things that are in focus, things that are out of focus, things that are out of focus in the foreground, background, subject tap sharp, tap sharp, tack sharp, like tack, not tap. Tap, tap, tap. Just layer your images. So you've probably seen a million shots of like iconic things, but they're usually just like the Golden Gate Bridge or the Rocky Mountains, but usually you don't see something in the foreground. That kind of just sets up that story, gives you more depth to your photo, gives more depth to your video. More motorcycle, come on, man. I don't know if that's coming through, but it's kind of loud. Anyway, that's my next tip. I don't know what the next one is. I'm just, I'm just winging it here. We're winging it. We're just shooting, we're winging, and maybe something cool is gonna come of this. Let's go. What's next? My suggestion is if you're going out to shoot for the day doing street photography is don't head home too early because look at this. It's sunset right now. The lighting is beautiful. Uh, the street lights, like it's all wet because it's been raining all day and everything just looks gorgeous. So don't head home too early. Stay until it's too dark to shoot. And then look at your shots, download your shots, edit your shots, make them awesome. And I hope you guys like this. If you do, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs> By the way, I'm on the phone with uh, Josh Haynes. He just happened to call right as I started recording, and now he's telling me he's on the bathroom, and I'm vlogging. Vlogtorial, he's taking a, you know what. But anyway, peace out guys, see you next time. Right there, right there, that's where I took my banger shot. Right there, mm, nailed it.